Hey guys, it's Steve Harris at Museums.com. Today we're going to look at our new responsive images widget. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to define a specific image based on the screen width of the browser. So you can see on the example we have on screen here that we have this full Muse Themes logo. But if we go ahead and shrink the browser just from the right side, then as we hit certain points, the logo actually adjusts and changes. And those are completely separate images. So if we keep scaling it down here, we get an even smaller logo. And finally at the end here where we kind of have a mobile size, we have a really small, just kind of simple icon. So these logos are actually responding to the browser size. So this is a really cool effect and we can't take credit for it fully. It's based on an experiment by a guy named Joe Harrison. And this was kind of really popular in the web design world for a little while. And so on his site here, he used some, some bigger brand logos and it does a similar thing. As you scale it down, you see the logo adjust and then kind of end as a simple symbol there. So I think it's an awesome effect and although Muse doesn't officially support responsive design, we wanted to try and just kind of play with some of these features to see how it worked. So if we go ahead and jump in Muse, let me show you how we made this. So first of all, as always, scroll down to the responsive images and logos widget, that's number 32 in our widget toolbox, and just drag it out onto the page. When you drag this out, let me close this, you'll see you'll just get this empty image frame and then we have an options panel here that isn't very big. It's uh, kind of a comfortable size I think for this widget. And so we have a couple of different blocks within this widget flyout panel. We have the area where you actually define the images themselves. Then you can set specific screen width breakpoints. So the breakpoints are actually where the images are going to transition to the next one. And then below that you have some really simple style and frame options. Now you're probably going to use most, most of your styling is going to be done in terms of the actual image that you're putting into the, into the site. But we did include some things like alignment and the ability to specify a background color in there. So the first thing we need to do is you need to make your responsive images. So let me bring up a finder window here and I have a couple of images that we can use as samples. So I have a desktop icon a mobile icon, and then two tablet icons. And the tablet icons are in different orientations. And so these images are actually all different sizes. So we can control the sizing of this using the scaling options within the widget. So the first thing we'll do is click File and Add Files for Upload. Let's click on those logos, or that logos folder rather. Select those four images and click Open. So when you've done that, they're now on the assets panel and they're showing up here among some other ones that I've been testing. And now what we need to do is just enter the names of those files in the widget. So I actually already have the names in here, desktop.png, tablet, tablet portrait, and mobile. So you can enter anything you do in there. Um, as always, I would recommend you keep these names fairly simple. So then next we have the screen width breakpoints and the breakpoints we've kind of set at some very common sizes. So you may not want to change these if you don't want or um, you can tweak them depending on what you're using this widget for. But let's just leave that as is for now and let's go down to the bottom. So in this bottom area we have one really important option we need to set and that's the image scaling. So right now we have maintain original size set. And what that's going to do is it's going to use this frame size and it's going to maintain the original size of the images we put in it. So if I preview this in the browser actually, this will help explain it a little better. Okay, you can see that we have this weird line and if I scale the browser down, Something's changing, but it's clearly cut off and odd. That's because the images we used for that frame were too big. So we could either use smaller images or let's just change this image scaling. Drop this to scale to fill frame. And what that'll do is just shrink those images down and now they should fit nicely in that frame. Okay, so now you can see that the whole icon fits in that frame. And if we just scale the browser down, they're automatically changing based on those breakpoints that we've set. So this is uh, the widget works basically out of the box using these simple icons. And if we go back into Muse here, actually I'm just gonna delete out that asset that keeps giving me an error here. I'll delete them all and just add in some different ones. Um, let me show you another option or another idea in terms of how you can use images in this widget. 
For the Muse themes ones that I built or used on the sample site, I made them all the same size. So rather than having to have the widget itself control the scaling of the image, I just made all of these images at, I think these are about, uh, let's see, 350 by 200 pixels. So it was a little bit easier for me to see it this way and actually build them in Photoshop this way. And so if I was to use these ones in my site, we just add them for upload and I'll go ahead and just enter the names in here. So that was 1mt.png, 2mt.png. Okay, so once they're all in, let's just preview this in the browser to make sure it works properly. There, so now you can see all of our logos are in and as we scale the browser down, they're all changing. There. So the other style option or the other style options that we have on this widget in this kind of bottom area are helpful if you're using an image that has a colored background. So you can of course use transparent images in this, but for these Muse themes logos, you may notice they have a black background. And in this case, we may want to set our image frame background to be black. So let's just put that in. It's the hex value there. And the reason we might want to do that is because what if we wanted to set this image to be full width? And I'll show you what I mean. So if we click full width on there, now let's preview it in the browser. So now you can see the logos kind of spanning the entire page, but it's kind of shrinking and expanding depending on the actual page width. So as we scale it down, it's still changing. So that's where you may want to set that background color and we can below that set some alignment options. So we can choose to center that image in the frame or we can add some padding around it if we must. So one other thing I'm going to point out on this is for image scaling right now, it's set at scale to fill frame, but I'm going to just drop it back to maintain original size. The reason I'm doing that is because my Muse themes logos are all a very consistent size and they're nice and small. So they'll fit well in that frame. And the last thing I'm going to do to this box now that I have it full width is I'm going to pin it to the left. And if I pin this box to the left, let me show you what happens. Now, when I scale this down, it stays really nicely centered in the window. And that's because not only is the image frame itself full width, but the image is also pinned to the left side. So it means no matter how small I shrink it down, it's always going to be visible. If I didn't pin this box, when I shrunk the browser to be kind of the minimum page width and mutes, the logo would disappear behind it. So one other thing to point out, I think, on this widget is it is fairly experimental. And the reason I say that is because you may notice as you scale it down that you still have a scroll bar here at the bottom. The reason you have the scroll bar is again because you're setting a manual page width in Muse. Muse does not or was not designed to support responsive behavior in this sense and so anytime you're forcing this minimum page width you're going to end up with a scroll bar. Now we did investigate removing that page width um, or just even hiding the scroll bar but it just causes a ton of issues. If you take, take that page width out any of the elements on your site that are using it for a specific reason got all screwed up and messed up. So like I said, this widget is experimental. So let's see what you can do with it. And we'd love to see some examples if you end up using it on your site. We'll continue to tweak it as we get feedback from the community. But otherwise, if you have any questions or concerns with it, please don't hesitate to get in touch either through our customer forum or our support portal. Thanks again and good luck.